Using Jumps to Improve Gymnastic Ability, presented by Stuart Tinney. Stuart has achieved many successes at major events throughout Australia and Europe, including the Olympic dream of winning a gold medal in the team's event at the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. Today, Stuart and wife Karen concentrate on running their business, Tinney Eventing, in Marilela, one hour from central Sydney, coaching, training and competing at an elite level with a team of horses. We are very lucky to have Stuart here today with us as he's just com come back from competing at the World Equestrian Games in France. Stuart's demonstration today is called Using Jumps to Improve Gymnastic Ability, useful for those looking to improve their inventing dressage and for the dressage riders looking to spice up their training. Demonstrating for Stuart today is Tanya Schmidt on Laurentino, owned by Louise Steria. Tanya is a professional rider, starting out in Pony Club at just four years of age. She now speciali specialises in eventing. Tanya and Laurentino won the 2011 Queensland State Eventing Championships title, and this year Tanya has won nine events on four different horses at every level, up to one star, and is currently leading the Sandale Saddlery Eventing Leaderboard for 2014. Laurentino is a seven-year-old gelding by Lubeck. And Stuart is riding Sarah Rialto, owned by Tanya Smith. Rialto is an eight-year-old gelding by Rhodium, and although only started competing 12 months ago, has already reached one star level, winning the 2013 Queensland State Eventing Championship at preliminary level. Over to you, Stuart. me, hope so. Um, thank you very much. Good afternoon. It's nice sitting around in the tables drinking wine. That looks like a nice thing to do in the afternoon. Um, just a little bit of a change with the horses. Tanya's actually gone off to Warwick event this weekend and she's taking those two horses to try to win some ribbons. So we've got a little bit of a change. I've got Maddie Ho here on her horse Pirate and he's a five-year-old. He's doing eventing as well, but just a young horse that's sort of learning and that's where this is going to be great anyway for these young horses to be helping them assess the situation with these rails a little bit. And the guy Rondo that I'm on, he's just turned six. He's the same. He has done a just one one-star event, which is sort of a metre ten sort of height, but he's only just a baby as well and he's learning to canter a little better and hopefully that's what some of these exercises will help. Now with the, um, a lot of this is just rails on the ground, so a little bit is getting the horse to take the focus a little bit off the rider and puts it a little bit more onto the rail. I've had a few horses that I've evented over the years and I've even started them as dressage horses. One horse springs to mind, Ava, who I ended up taking to the World Championships and has represented Italy at the Olympic Games many times. She was actually bought as a dressage horse and she was a little bit hot and a little bit difficult and when we did some little exercises with rails on the ground just to get it to concentrate a little better, that was the main reason we did it, um, it really helped her focus a little bit more on the ground and what she was doing and a little bit less of the environment. And the more we did the rails, of course, we realised that she was quite a nice jumper and then ended up being an eventer. But So what we'll do is we'll start off with these two guys. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to trot down over a couple of rails on the ground. So the, the biggest thing we're going to do first, and Maddie, if you just do what I'm doing, we'll just trot down over these two rails on the side. Um, really, we're just going to see what the horse does about the rail. And with, when you start with some rails on the ground, some green horses might get a little confused and they might actually stand on the rail, trip over the rail. I'm just going to trot down over these two and see what the horse does about it. And what you want them to do really is just adjust their stride if they're wrong. I'm not really doing anything about the little adjustment of the stride there so he didn't hit the rail, cared about it a little bit. And that's all we're really doing at the moment is just seeing how the horse goes over that rail. So just the same, Maddie, just trotting down over those two rails like I did. And then as the exercise gets a little busier, 
and a little more complicated. We'll see how the horses adjust. Good. And Maddie, just jump the blue bit next time. Just stay in the middle of the rails a little bit more. Be a little more precise. It's a bit like trotting up the centre line, yeah? You've got to make sure you're sort of on it a little bit. That guy, this guy at that time actually was quite even in his pace and he didn't actually have to adjust to the rail. I'll just watch Maddie's horse go down over that one. And we'll see if he has to adjust his stride and whether he does. Good. Yep, that's nice. Yeah, so he's a little bit away, so he accelerated and stepped bigger to step out over the rail. So he did a good job. So now what we're going to do is, Maddie, you can actually start, just continue around and just trot over these rails on this little curve, so on a circle. We're just going to trot over these rails here on this little fan. Now with them when they're on a little angle like that, you can adjust it a little bit to what your horse is stride length is like. So if we're trying to collect the horse's stride, we can move into the inside a little so it's shorter. And if we're trying to lengthen the stride, we can go out a little bit. Maddie's just jumping in the middle there at the moment. And the horse is, yeah, lovely. And see how it elevates his trot. He bends his hocks a little more, elevates his trot a little more. And then you look and you think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if he trotted like that all the time, wouldn't it? So it's sort of helping him. Mind you, he's got quite a nice trot anyway. And then he just elevates. Good. And he did a great job. He just stepped a bit bigger to go into it. Good. Just wait there, Maddie, and I'll have a go. Yeah, it's a bit of, did that very well, Maddie. So now I've got to try to do that better. Let's see how I go. <laughs> And what it does a little bit too, and what I find probably with this guy, I'm not going to do too much about making his mouth better or rounder or softer. I'm just going to feel the contact of his mouth and I'm just going to let these exercises get him to be a little bit more submissive. Not that he's too bad, like he's in a frame, he's round, he's leaning and a bit long. Good, and he was wrong. He had to adjust that last step. But before I went in, I thought he was sort of pulling the range and leaning on my hand a little bit. So if he keeps doing that, he's probably going to make these rails, see, wrong. So if he decides to be a little nicer in the mouth, especially on that inside left rein that he wants to keep pulling a little bit, hopefully these rails, good. He backed up a little bit, got off my hand a little as he went through the rails. Still leaning on my hand a little there at the moment. Same again, I'll just see, there he's come a little nicer. Good, once again he's still on that left rein. I'm just going to go into the inside a little bit more, so where it's a little more collected. See if he'll shorten up a little. Good, his mouth actually got a little better through the exercise and his mouth is a little better afterwards. Once again, just leaning a little bit, oh, stalling. Good. And his mouth is just starting to me to feel a little nicer the more I go around and do the exercise. Maddie, you can just join in, we'll just do it on the other rein. Same thing, I'm not gonna do too much about fixing him. I'm gonna let him work it out for himself a little bit. And I find that's where these exercises can really help and as we do these other exercises too, if he wants to be a little bit long and a bit leany, he'll find the exercises a little difficult. Good. It's getting a little nicer. Maddie's horse looks pretty good. His frame is quite nice. He doesn't look like he's getting a little low and leany at all. Actually, he looks quite nice in the frame. Good. Okay. So we'll just change those rails if we can. <clears throat> so we're just going to make those rails now a little bit wider and we're going to turn it into a canter exercise. So the first thing we will do now in the canter, Maddie, if you can just go down over the two rails on the ground in canter like we were doing in trot, that'd be great. Ta. So what we're going to do here is Maddie's just going to canter 
pretty normally down over these two rails. Just a normal canter, not collected, not too open. And these rails are just put on the ground anywhere. I haven't actually stepped any distance between them. And he adjusted his stride there. He was a little too close to the second rail and he shortened his little canter up. Good, so just a little more forward in the canter, Matty. So a little bit more normal, don't have too much collection in it. Yeah, good. Okay, so then, like I said, they're just put on the ground. So we'll go down and we'll just count how many strides in between those rails. Yeah, a little more canter, Matty, so you're not gonna fall into trot. Matty, more canter. Good. Good. So pretty normal canter. Go over the first one. One, two, three, four, five, and a little sixth stride. He did a little sixth one at the end, so he's fitting six in there. Okay, so Matty, I want you to go down there in five strides now. So if we jump that first rail a little bit more normal, and then leave the canter a little more open, we can do five strides in there. Good, just keep coming like that. Keep coming, don't collect the corner. No, that's still six strides, so let's do it again. I need you to go a little more forward and let go of the mouth a little bit, allow the canter to go more forward. So as you come around the corner onto the first rail, don't shorten the canter. Just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Mm, a bit short again, but anyway, we'll see if it gets five. One, two, three, four, five, just, yeah, just. So Matty, if you can go a little faster next time, he won't have to take that big stride at the end. So a little more forward again, and then we'll see. Yeah, that's good. So he won't have to take that big step at the end. The five will be pretty even. That's better. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, so let's go back. And now we're going to do collection. And we're just going to try to do seven or eight or nine, whatever. Just teaching the horse to wait a little bit and be short in the canter, which we actually know he can do because it was actually harder to get Matty to go a little forward, actually. So the collection looked pretty good. So let's see what we get here, six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, so let's do seven or eight now. So what you're gonna do is go as collected as you can. Just go back to collection. You'll either fall out of the trot, fall into trot or you'll go collected. So seven or eight for me. Okay, just do as much collection as he can do. And what I find too is I don't, shy away from that, like if the horse falls out of canter into trot, no big deal, I'll just pop it back into canter again, have another go. And the horse will eventually, one, get better at collecting, and two, understanding the exercise more. And of course, depending how green the canter is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good, but what you also see is he did a tiny, tiny little canter stride before that front rail, which means he has the ability to do a tiny, tiny little canter stride. Thanks, Matty. I'll have a go now. So same again. I'm not really going to do much about the frame. Just going to canter along. Pretty normal to start with. You can see what the striding is. One, two, three, four, five. So pretty even in the five. He did a little tiny jump over the first rail. Some horses just canter over the rail. That time he did a little jump. Once again, five's pretty normal. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of collection. I wanna get the waiting canter before I arrive at the rail. little seven stride, a little bit of resistance in the middle. Once again, I didn't really do much about that. I just sort of let him figure it out himself. And as the rail started to approach, he started to submit more because he cares about the rail, which is nice. So I become less of a drama to him and the rail becomes a bit more of a drama. So I don't annoy him as much. I just keep it collected. And once again, he got nicer as the rail approached. That's good. We're gonna have a little go, I'll go first. So we're just gonna do that same exercise here that we did in the 
the trot, this time in canter. And we'll see what happens. Same again, I'm not gonna make him rounder. I'm not gonna criticize his connection. I'm gonna let the exercise do that a little bit. Good, got a little bit weak, but he cared. He tried to do something about not hitting the rails. I'll give him a little more room. I'm gonna go out towards the white a little bit more. Good. Now I'm gonna go around the blue and the white where they join, so it's a little more collected. And his candy does get a little bit weak, this guy. Good, he joined in right at the arrival at the first rail. And now I'm gonna head a little bit towards where the blue and the white hit on the other end, where for him, I think will be quite collected. <laughs> He'll struggle a bit in here. So he decided to run, put his head in the air and run. And then he went, oh Jesus, I've mucked that up. <laughs> so let's have another go. So don't worry about that. Just let the exercise do the work. Good, decided to do it again, but then changed his mind, which was nice. <laughs> Little collection, good, he struggled. That's about his limit of collection, but he had a go, it was good. Okay, Maddie, have another little go. It was good. And that little bit of arrogance where he stuck his head in the air and went, oh, I'm just gonna go through it. And then got to the rails and went, oh God, what have I done? And had to do something to fix it. Once again, it takes the focus off me. Because if I'm doing all the work, he can just be arguing with me. That's good. The horse just arrived a bit wrong to the first rail. So then he just popped the trot step in. Once again, let's see if he sorts that out a little bit himself. Good, he had to accelerate to get in. So Matty, if you just keep your eye on that front rail, look at that first rail, because it's the one we've got to arrive well at. Good, that's good. Lovely little canter in front of the first rail, it was beautiful. Okay, same again now, Maddie. Move in towards the inside white. Inside edge. Good. Good. You just do it again. He's got a bit confused with the last one. And then he changed behind. And then he got, oh, well, I don't know what I'm doing now. It's fine. He'll work it out. And when you think about it, he did it again. He changed behind over the rail and then changed back. And you sort of got to look at him, hmm, I wonder why he thinks changing behind's a good idea. But I presume after a few goes, he'll end up thinking, yeah, I won't change behind, actually, I'll just shorten my hind leg, okay? So once again, it works quite well because the horse cares about the rail and tries to do something about it. So when he gets in a little bit of a tricky sit, yeah, he put them together that time, okay? So he'll get better. Okay, Maddie, just give him a little walk. And we'll just do that on the other rein too, because quite often they're different one side to the other. We'll see how this guy goes. So once again, because his can is a little weaker than Maddie's, I'm gonna head a little bit more towards the outside edge of the blue. Good. His flexion and inside rein feel a smidgen better on this rein. So it's the curve and the going through the rails with a little bit of a bend in his body seems a bit easier. Yeah, not too bad. And now I'll head back in towards that inside edge of the blue again. Good, came a little nicer in the mouth then. So that little collection where he's gonna find it a little harder to do. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, don't drop. Good. He went to come a little above the bit again, but he did the rails quite well. Okay, Maddie, just the same on that rail. So, so much of this, I mean, it is about our jumping because when we come to a fence, it's our job as a rider to deliver the horse to a good takeoff spot to the fence. So if we're cantering into the fence and we see that we're gonna to be too close, we're too, what we call deep, we're too close into the fence, we need to take them and shorten them. Um, and then obviously how 
well their ability is to wait and shorten their stride up then depends on how we arrive at that fence. So if four strides out from the fence I see I'm too close and then I shorten the horse and it shortens then I'll arrive at the fence well. But it, as we all know when the horse is a little green and a little green at cantering when we take and shorten it doesn't necessarily mean it happens. So four strides out from the fence I might be too close then I shorten the canter and nothing happens and I end up too close. So I'll probably knock that fence down. So that's what these exercises teach the horse that when I say slow and shorten, please shorten, shows them how to, plus there's a rail in front of you, so I'm actually telling you to shorten for a reason. Whereas it's on the flat, when we're just doing dressage, we're really only shortening because we want to. At least this gives them another reason to shorten. That was great, Maddie, really good. And then what I love to see there is that last time the horse went through there with Maddie, it did it pretty perfectly, the time after it made a mistake. Yeah, he got in the time before and he was a bit wrong and he balls it up and he fell into trot halfway through it and just sort of made a mess of it. Didn't hit the rails though. The next time when Matty shortened him, he shortened. He shortened his canter up really well and did a really good job. Now, it's another little exercise. It's such a simple little exercise, but I can tell you this one can feel a bit messy. I'm just going to canter on a circle around over these four rails. What happens a little bit is you, eventually after I do it a few times there'll be a pattern to it. This between these two will be three or four strides, then that one the same. But what happens is if you muck one of the rails up, it quite often follows through and mucks the next one up and then the next one up and it takes a while before it starts to get into sync again. So I'll just start off and I'll do it and what I want to eventually get to a pattern of doing the same amount of strides between each rail. Okay, so it's up to me then to modify my line a little bit too. Okay, let's have a little go. So just once again, normal canter, pretty normal, and I'm going to aim somewhere around the middle of the rails hopefully, and then how rideable my horse is as I go around here and he'll make a few little mistakes probably. I won't necessarily get to the rails correctly, a bit like that one, and then see if I can get a nice curve and a nice balance of miles away from that rail. Yuck, this will wreck this rail. Yep, that wrecked that rail. Now I'm too short to this one. That's mucked up as well, <laughs> see what I mean? Don't worry, just keep doing it. And what's going to happen eventually is my horse will become easier to ride because he'll go, oh my God, what are you doing? You're not riding very well. And he'll start listening to my aids better. So as I turn him and accelerate him to that rail like I had to, and then shorten him to this one, see, none of those really worked. Accelerate to this one, wait to this one. That one's nice, I don't have to do anything. This one's nice, got to accelerate to that one. Wait to this one. See, it's starting to actually work a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not go as wide here so I don't have to accelerate. There you go, that worked better. Don't go as wide here. And then I can actually modify the line until it starts to work a little bit better. Good. Okay. And I don't care about mucking it up. It's almost, well, I think in the beginning it was more my fault than his. <laughs> and then halfway through when I tried to help him, he was a bit, oh, what are you doing? And then he became easy, yeah? So once again, though, it's because they care about the rails and it takes the focus off me again, instead of it all being about me. I'm asking, but the horse starts to respect me more because it's difficult. And it's such a simple little exercise, but it, I've had some horses where it's taken me a week before I can even get around them, because they're just sort of either arguing or they don't respect the rail enough. It's good, so that's beautiful. Maddie's horse has really got that down pat, really. Good, made a little mistake there. And you just let the mistake help the horse. He'll just respect everything a bit more. That was good. Very good. It's lovely, a nice bend, a nice submission and lovely collection there. When Maddie said, wait, I'm a bit deep to that fence, he listened beautifully. That's great, Maddie. Really good. That'll do. And I'm just going to do the same little thing on the other side. <laughs> that was perfect. 
and the same again. Like I said, I'm not going to worry too much if I balls it up. We'll see what happens. This guy actually flexes a little better this way. And this guy's canter works okay if I'm jumping around the blue bits. Sometimes they'll jump over the, um, the rail and actually go on the wrong leg or stand on it like that. Doesn't matter. Wrong. Good. He did something about it. I was too wide. I said, oh, I need to move in real quickly. And he actually listened. Oh, didn't jump that one very well. I'm wrong to this one. What's going to happen? Oh, good. Something. Good. So even when I'm a bit wrong, I don't worry about it too much. And with this guy, his flexion is actually hindering me. He's bending and bulging, which is making it not work so much for me. So I'm going to start adding my outside rein in to turn him, to take away that bulging that he's doing. And that'll get me to the fence in a better stride. See, now I'm turning with the out outside rein and not bulging as much. It's actually getting the rails better. Okay. Took me a while. I did about three goes before I realised, why am I getting to them all so badly? And that was the, the actual flexion, the lovely bend he had was actually working against me a little bit. Okay. Same, Maddie. It's just actually falling in a little bit occasionally, Maddie's horse. Yep, fell out of the canter, don't worry. Falls in a little here, then bulges out a little there, now bulges, which made that one a bit wrong. Good. 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 This actually looks a little wobblier this way than it does on the other side. Oh, bulged out a little, so added a stride. Good, it's getting better. Good, and what I find is all those little aids I'm doing, I'm doing lots of little, little aids, nothing big, just little move over here, move over there sort of aids. In the beginning, not much happens, and after you do them a few times, it actually starts to work a little bit. Um, this has got a rail that's moved. Is Louise around? Just need the rail moved. I don't know where. Yeah, this rail's just moved. It'd be lovely if someone could move it back. To us. <laughs> well done. See how it's just been kicked. Let's just kick it back in the same place. It'd be great. Ta. And actually, while you're here, while you're here, while you're there, we'll just pop it up on the outside edge. Put the cup mm, third from the bottom. Yeah, ta. Third from the bottom. Be great. And we'll just pop the rail up in there. These guys aren't too bad. And if we can do that the same with the one over there on the other side, it'd be lovely. This one over here too, be good. Thank you. Well done. You a dressage rider? No, I'll give you Are you a dressage rider? Dressage rider? You? Oh, do you? Good. Well, your dressage rider doing jumps is very good. This one here, ta. This one. Thanks third from the bottom. Now, um, these guys aren't too bad because they respect the rail, so they're doing a good job. But if you get a horse that stands on them a bit and keeps tripping over them, and thank you very much. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> well done. Woo. You can just do this a little bit, and it doesn't have to be a wing, you can just pop it up on anything. It just makes the rail a bit more real. Like, they can't stand on that. You can't just be slack and lazy and stand on top of that rail because it's actually sticking up in the air. So if you've got a horse that is a little bit complacent about the rail and wants to just trip on it and stand on it and stuff like that, then just popping it up on one edge helps. Okay, let's have a go. Let's see, this guy, like I said, he wasn't too bad, so it'd be interesting to see if it makes any difference to him or whether he actually jumps it a bit, which I don't really want him to jump it higher because that's only going to balls it up a little bit more for me little bit more, bulged, wreck that one, don't bulge, good, don't bulge, good, because if you bulge, then I can't get to the fence properly, good, so it, I don't really think it's made a lot of difference to this horse, he's pretty similar, 
but as I said, it's mainly for those horses that are going to be a little bit disrespectful of the fence. So you might get that with some dressage horse because they're not jumpers. But it's just a matter of getting them to listen. Just do that, Maddie, too. Let's watch how your guy does that. Good, now Maddie, I want you to move right to the outer edge of the rail, right out to the right out to the outside edge, and this is where we're going to add a stride, and with this guy, because his collection's quite good, we've got to get him to collect outside edge, right out onto the outside edge, so we're actually adding more strides in those, right onto that outside edge. Now here, right up against the wing, and just want to take away that big stride he does before he jumps the fence, I want him to pop in a little stride. So here when he gets a little bit close, now here I want him to add a stride and not do that big one there. So Maddie, I want you to go wider out and try to add more and go slower, especially here, this one here. Yep, he leapt again. He had a choice of waiting, but he leapt. I want him to think of waiting. Oh, he's still leaping. He's still leaping over them. We want him to wait and shorten. Better, good, outside edge, outside edge. Right under the outside edge. Good, thank you. Yep, right under that outside edge. Now here, let's see if he waits and doesn't leap, yes. Now here, whether he's gonna wait, better. Just Good, leapt a bit over that one. Good, shortened his canter up there, which was great. Leapt again over that one, didn't shorten. A little more waiting. Yes, that's it, beautiful. Now a little more waiting. Yes, now a little more waiting. Does that little change behind again? When he gets a bit collected and gets a little bit worried about hitting his back leg on the rail, he does a little change behind. See that, went together again. I think that's because the inside hind leg, see how the inside hind leg goes forward? And he thinks, oh, I'm going to stand on that rail. So he goes either together behind or changes behind. Thanks, Matty. And what sort of makes sense, I can understand why he's doing that, but what I'd like him to do is think to shorten more than to place his feet differently. Okay, so when he's right, though, he is probably going to hit that rail with his back leg. But if he thinks to shorten his canter more than fix his back legs up, he'll sort that out. Okay, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Just sort of aiming around the middle of the jump on this guy. Because I was talking, I don't know how many strides I was doing in between. Three, I think. But it felt fairly normal, fairly comfortable. So I'm going to go to the outside edge now. And then I'm going to see if I can add a few more strides in. And this guy, of course, will get a little bit weak in his canter, I think. Doesn't matter. Let's let him see if he can work it out a little bit. Good, little bit of a leap. Actually came back okay. I've got to watch that bulge again, of course, so I'm going to turn with my outside rain aid more than my inside so I don't get too much neck flexion. Yeah, once again, it feels quite normal. Doesn't feel like he's overly collecting. He's getting the job done quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep that amount of stride. See, he's getting a bit weak and falling out. I'm just going to move in a little bit and see if I can keep the same amount of strides but on a smaller... Good, he shortened up then when I said wait. Then he trotted. Good. Maddie's actually doing a good job. Maddie's actually riding the correct line and when she applies her hand to do something, it's because it needs to be done. Because the rail's a little bit wrong. And you'll see what's going on, like... In the beginning, you might think you can't really tell which stride the horse is going to do, but the more you do, the more you'll see it. It's, um, it's a feeling. You sort of get the vibe of what's going to happen more than seeing how many strides you got. Just a little feeling that they're a little bit wrong or a little bit right. Good. He balls one up, so then he thought he'd have a little argument, and then he went, oh, no, actually, I think I'll just listen. Good. Swapped onto the other lead. Good. He swapped. Stop. 
Yep, don't trot Matty canter. And if he swaps onto the other lead, then he'll have to work out, oh, it's not a wise idea, I'm on a right circle, cantering on the left lead's a bit hard, so he'll just swap back. Good. Good. And neither of these horses do this exercise very much. And, and you'll be surprised after you do this exercise just a few times, just, um, I don't know, do it once a week for a couple of weeks, massively better. The horse will understand it as soon as you start doing it. Lovely. Thanks, Maddie. That's good. Let's bring him in. Good. Okay, now just to finish up, we will just do a little jump. I'm just going to trot into this little cross rail. And then after the cross rail, because horses, to some degree, after they jump a jump, they land on their head, on their forehand. And in fact, the better their back legs are, because we want their back legs to be soft and open. So if their back legs are soft and open, they actually land onto their head quite a lot. After the fence, when we're going to bring them back together again, hopefully still cantering, because the, the, um, the jump is actually a canter stride, so it's the first canter stride they do. So we're going to trot in, they're going to canter over the jump, because that's the first canter stride they do. Hopefully they'll land cantering. And I'm just going to then apply the waiting aid to see if they'll collect again before that next little jump. Once again, I don't know the distance in there, so I don't know whether it's going to be two or three strides, maybe even four strides. But we'll see. And he might fall out of the canter. He might have a heart attack that he's, I've asked him to re-weight in here. He might go, oh, what are you doing that for? We'll see. And as a horse, he does go a little low in the neck and he can lean a little bit. So we'll see, I'll just do a couple and see what he's got. So I've just shortened my stirrup so when he jumps I can get out of this saddle because the cantle hits me in the bottom a bit in dressage saddles. So just trot him in, keeping him straight and then get him to wait and see, that's just really not very good waiting, is it? <laughs> so, but that's normal, it's what horses do. So, oh yeah, there you go, what was that? Sort of fell into trot and continued trotting long. Good, so I'm going to do it again. So I couldn't tell you how many strides or anything that was because it all fell apart pretty quick. So I'll do it again. So I'm pretty much just trotting around, keeping it all pretty normal. Let go of his mouth as he jumps. And then apply the rain aid to wait. Good, it was something. Stay cantering at least, it was good. I got to the fence okay. And I think maybe the stride before I jumped, the second fence, it felt okay. The bit in between, yeah, not so good. But it worked. Same again. Just keep him balanced. Soften my hand to allow him to jump. Reweight. See, so he actually lent more that time than he did the time before. But right before he took off, he fixed himself. So do it again. Let's see if this time he listens to me a little bit. And also, he should start getting with the program of what I'm probably going to do on landing. So I come in, I soften, and I'm probably going to do this, which he didn't listen to. Again. Do it once again. And what we can do as jumpers, I can make that jump taller. And then if he doesn't want to listen to me, then he'll actually probably hit the fence. So I can once again get that fence to help me and get him to listen to me. He's actually waited in front of, oh, he waited heaps better. He waited before he took off over the cross rail. It's lovely. Okay, go Maddie. Just before I got to the cross rail, he waited a bit. So he didn't land quite as long. So then when I waited, he waited a little bit better. That was good. And like I said, because we jump, we can make the jump higher too to get it to help us more. See, Maddie's horse sits in a nice frame, sort of not too heavy in the bridle, off the forehand. 
Good. Good. Just do that again, Maddie. And what I'd do, about halfway through, I'd re-soften my hand again because he waited well, he didn't lean. Just soften the hand a little bit over the second fence again to allow him to use himself a little bit over the fence. That was lovely. Really polite in the weight. Good frame, nice trot. Maddie softens her hand here, rebalances, and let go. I need you, Maddie, to let go again as you jump over the second fence. So once again, once you've achieved that nice weight, reward the horse. So what you're really doing is saying, good. You're applying, to me, you're sort of communicating with them. So you're, you're applying your hand to say, slow down. And when the horse slowed down and the spot's good, then you soften your hand and say, good, thanks for that. He doesn't need any more rain because he's done a good job. So just wait a little, now let go. Lovely. And then he can relax and use his neck and jump the fence better. And of course, if that was an actual jump, thanks, Matty, just bring him in. They actually need to use their neck a little bit to jump the fence. So thanks, guys. I know it's not dressage, but it certainly is something that might be able to help you. And don't feel it's too daunting either, just putting some rails on the ground, it's fine. And if you, any of you got a really nice dressage horse that wants to jump over the rails way too big and wants to become an eventer, give me a call. I'd like one of them. Because the way our sport's going, we need, we need lovely dressage. We, 80% would be handy for us. And so if we can get horses that can do 80% dressage and then jump all the jumps really well, That'd be great. I'd love one of those, so give me a call. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Stuart. And if you'll just stand there for a moment, Jenny Rycroft is coming into the arena to say thank you. If we could have the jumps removed as quickly as possible, that would be super too. Hello. Oh, I'm online. Good news. <laughs> Stuart... Just a, we've got someone who'd like to ask just a couple of questions. So could you, just a couple of minutes. Um, Melissa, you're right, you're mic'd up. Hi, Stuart. Um, I'd just like to take the opportunity. I know you've finished off there and said, I know it's not dressage, but it's important. <laughs> and I think it would be really good if we pointed out to the audience that, in fact, it is dressage. Anything to do with training is dressage. And I think I'd like to get a, just a quick comment on how you can see this sort of training, this sort of gymnastic training, linking into the training of the dressage horse. I know Rainer Klimke wrote the book. You see Ingrid Klimke, you saw that beautiful German girl's dressage test in WEG <laughs> and the jumping. Um, and I know you were talking a lot about getting there at the correct spot, finding the correct rhythm, increasing and decreasing the horse's collection. And that's what dressage is all about as well. So could you just give one quick comment about how that might link in? And then I've got another quick question. Sorry. Yeah, as you know, with, with proper good high-level dressage, it's actually all about the collection, isn't it? I mean, you've got these lovely young horses that go out into the young horses class. Beautiful, big moving, soft, lovely. But really, if they're going to cut it on a world stage in pure dressage, it's all about how well they collect. So how well those transitions from Piaf to Passage is and, and the can of pirouettes and all that sort of stuff. And of course, the changes, which is about collection as well. Um, so yeah, anything that's going to make the horse be able to sit, engage. I do find with these early stages with the, the young horses, as so many of them are, are built a bit long and, and the trouble with our sport is Every time we do anything to make them collect and become more submissive, then we go galloping across the paddock, kicking them. So it's contradicting everything that we do. Mind you, at the end of that paddock that we've galloped across, we have to say, quick, slow down, get collected, jump the fence. So we need them to do both of those jobs pretty quickly. And, and how fast I am cross country is really all about how quickly I can go from that gallop back to what I need to do to jump the fence. So that's actually what makes the horse fast, not how fast I gallop, really. So in the way the sport is at the moment, it's the horse that's fast is a snaffle bit that I can gallop across the paddock, sit up and wait, and it just waits. So once again, all of this training that we do here really helps the horse do that. And of course, so does the horse though. You know, they some have soft mouths, some have harder mouths, some have the ability to be able to concertina their body backwards and engage. Other ones are a bit long and physically built. It's confirmation is a massive thing, I think. And really helps if the horses conform the correct way. 
So, but what I like with these exercises too is about, I'm not arguing with them. If, you know, if, if I ask them to slow down and they want to shake their head and go, no, I don't want to slow down, and they want to argue with me, it takes away that, so well, it's fine, I'm not going to argue with you, I'm just going to ask you to wait, and if you don't want to wait, then the rail will be in the wrong place. So it gets the horse to maybe even have a nicer attitude to it a little bit. So that's what I like about it, because I don't like arguing with them very much. Come second to us. It's, it's interesting that you made that point, because that leads perfectly into the second point. I heard you say over and over again, if the horse makes a mistake, I just come round and repeat it and let him figure it out. And probably half the dressage riders in the audience, because we are total control freaks, absolutely compulsive, obsessive control freaks. And the very idea of letting the horse make a mistake is almost foreign. But when you talk to a lot of the top trainers, they say the same thing. A mistake is just a chance to train. Let them make a mistake. Let them sort it out a little bit themselves. Don't think that you have to be so completely in control that they don't have any um, responsibility. So would you like to just quickly comment on that too and then we'll get out of the way. Yeah, I, I find one of the, the easiest ones in that respect is when you're um, teaching a horse how to do a medium trot. So you'll have a horse that you go scuttling down the long side in this fast little scooty trot. They're going, oh, how was that? And I go, well, technically not very good. But they think they're doing the right thing. They're scuttling down there 100 miles an hour because that's what I'm sort of telling the horse to do. So what I've got to say to it, okay, so I've got to show you that you have another trot. There's another trot there that you own that you don't even know you own. So I go a little bigger and it will either scuttle faster, skip or break into canter. It'll do one of those things. So if it scuttles faster, I go a little bit more until it makes a mistake. And then it'll make a mistake and it'll pop into canter and then I'll go, no, back to trot, not allowed to canter. And after I do that a few times, it goes, well, what are you doing, you weirdo? You're just riding badly, yeah? I'm not allowed to canter, but you're scuttling me down the long side at 100 miles an hour. And then just before it breaks a couple of times, it'll take a couple of bigger steps and it'll go, ooh, what was that? Then it'll quite often scare itself and then pop into canter. But at least it's starting to see that other trot that it might have. And then over time, it ends up doing a few more of those bigger steps until eventually it'll go, look at me, I'm doing medium trot, something it didn't even know it owned. And the only way it finds it is by making those mistakes, skipping, popping into canter, making those errors. And, but if you only scuttle fast, it never gets to where you need to go. It never makes the mistake. So it scuttles down there at 100 miles an hour thinking that's what we want. But if you read the rule book, medium trot, is not scuttling down the long side at 100 miles an hour. It is. So those sort of things to me, you're just showing them and helping them. And of course, the horses that are intelligent get it quite quickly and the ones need to make some more mistakes than others, but they still get there in the end. So yeah, and it's enjoyable with those ones. And once you can see them learn that they have this whole other way of moving, is is nice, really nice. Thank you. Oh, and look, thanks ever so much. We know you've had a really busy schedule and congratulations at WIG uh, only a few weeks ago. So thanks very much for taking time out to come up here. Really appreciate it. Great. We really enjoyed what you've done today. Um, we have a gift for you, which I'll help walk out seeing you're on the board. Uh, it's a limited edi edition print uh, by our award-winning artist, Rosie Webb. We've got one packed already for you because we know that you have to probably get back on the plane very shortly. <laughs> so, Stuart, thanks again. Can everyone acknowledge Stuart one more time? Thank you.